Alright, hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to set up the EMS flashing program on any operating system. <clears throat> We're going to be taking advantage of VirtualBox and a virtual copy of Windows XP for this. Uh, you can find a Windows XP nowadays for pretty cheap. Uh, you can find a box, just make sure you get a license key with it so you can actually activate it. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is download VirtualBox. I already have it set up here. But you'll need VirtualBox and VirtualBox uh, extensions. I'll have links to both of them down below and links to install VirtualBox extensions. But in a point of time, I'm just going to show you how to set it up. So once you have VirtualBox set up, just click New. And if you don't already have a Windows XP operating system, just say Windows XP 32 bit. Give it a name. Doesn't matter. Click Next. Give it some RAM. I suggest at least one gigabyte, but you can give it more or less if you want. 2048 should be a pretty good amount. And then you say create new virtual hard drive. 10 gigabytes is fine, but you can always make it bigger or larger. Um, here you want to say dynamically allocated so it doesn't take up 10 gigabytes on your hard drive all the time. It means that hard drive's file size will only be as big as how many files you have on your hard, on your actual hard drive. Then you can choose where you want the hard drive to be stored and how big you want it to be. So if you want it to be two terabytes, you can do up to two terabytes. I wouldn't really suggest doing that, but it is an option. All right, to add your CD image or your physical CD, just right click on the operating system you want to insert your XP disk into, go to storage, and go over here and you should see virtual disk. And just go ahead and click on this. And over here, you can choose a virtual disk or choose one of your host drives. Your host drives mean like if you actually have a physical disk, you can put it into a CD drive, like over here, if I put it in a drive D, all I'd have to do over here is just go to drive D and boom, it would actually pass drive D to my virtual machine so it would install Windows XP. If you're using a CD-ROM image, like if you bought an ISO on a uh, virtual store or whatever, you can just click choose virtual disk and then find your operating system disk. All right, here I have Windows XP.ISO from one of my backups and just click on that. All right, so once you have that in there, all you have to do is just boot it up and install Windows XP like normal and it will install to your virtual hard drive and not your main computer because <laughs> you don't want that. Alright, so once you have Windows XP up, up and installed, the next thing you'll need to do is go to the website and download the drivers. You'll also need something to extract it with, so I'm going to use 7-Zip. Once you have 7-Zip already up and installed, which like I do, you should be able to just go ahead and open the archive that you downloaded. You'll have to tell it you want to open it with 7-Zip. Alright, we're going to open it with 7-Zip File Manager, so just go ahead and click Open. And there we go, there's the folder we need. And once you have Windows XP also installed, you can also install the guest editions, which will give you a lot more features that you can use in VirtualBox, make everything a lot easier. So just do install guest edition CD. And just go ahead and just go through all this. Alright. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and open up this folder, and we're going to need to install these drivers in a second, so go ahead and click up here and it will show you the path. Copy that. Alright, All right, now before you plug in your EMS flash cartridge, you'll go to, up to USB. And you can go over here to devices in the top of the window and click USB devices. Keep an eye on what you have up here and just kind of keep a mental image of what you see. Now go ahead and plug in your USB GB flash cartridge. If you see no devices under USB, then that means that you're probably running Linux and you probably haven't given the right permissions to your virtual box. So I'll have a link down there to get that fixed if you don't see any USB devices. But now, once you go down here and say USB, you see unknown device. So uh, just try to keep an eye on what that device is and we're gonna make it so we'll automatically mount that device every single time we run VirtualBox. All right, and on your VirtualBox main window, you wanna right click on your operating system again. And we're gonna go to settings. Go down to USB, which again you need to have uh, extend VirtualBox extensions or whatever installed also for. And we're going to go to Add USB Device Filter. And then you, once you once you plug it in, you should see a new device. So remember, the device has to have not been there before you plug in your Easy Flash. Just to show you again, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm unplugging it. I click say uh, New Device Filter, and it's gone. So see, this is what I have now. And when I go ahead and plug it in. It shows it right here. So let's go ahead and click unknown device, which is what it will probably say for you or something else. All right, now it says unknown device is automatically mapped to XP. Let's go ahead and click OK. And just go right back to your window. Go up here, you have the USB devices. And just go ahead and enable it. Next time it will do it automatically. See, it says VirtualBox USB is installed, which means it's passing it through to our virtual machine. All right, and now in Windows XP, it will say new hardware found. We don't want to use that. 
right click on my computer, click manage, and click device manager. And you should see a USB device in here that has a question mark on it. Right click and say update driver. Say no. Say install from a specific location. Search for best driver. Include a specific location. And then browse to whatever folder you put USB GB in. Go ahead and click next. And then we'll find this software and go ahead and click continue. And then boom, your driver is installed. But the best thing to do right now is to restart your computer. Um, if you installed VirtualBox uh, guest editions like I suggested, then rebooting is also good because it will make it so you can actually make your monitor fit to your screen better. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and restart the computer. All right. And now you should be able to have Windows XP scale to how big your window is. So if I make my window smaller, then and I click view, and, it says, and you can click adjust window to guess display size right there. And that means that however big you make this window is how big Windows XP should become. So just click view and then adjust to guess size. That makes everything a lot easier. So as you see here, now when I make it smaller, Windows XP is smaller. When I make it bigger, Windows XP is bigger. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and run the EMS software. I'm going to go ahead and make a shortcut on my desktop. All right, and let's click on devices. And if you click the USB devices, you'll see that you automatically have your EMS uh, mounted. So because we put that special filter, uh, we set the special filter in VirtualBox. That means every single time we boot up Windows XP, your EMS is automatically passed to the virtual machine, making everything faster and easier. If you have any trouble opening this application, it's a pretty simple fix. Just close the application, then unplug your USB smart card, open the application, and then plug it back in. If you set up a USB filter, it should automatically connect it to your Windows XP machine. So now that we see it here, we can see that we have page one empty and page two has nothing in it. So we're gonna just try to flash something real quick. Uh, let's go ahead and read one of the games out of page two, so I don't have any ROMs on here. Let's go ahead and read um, Tetris DX, reading it to just the desktop, and as you can see, absolutely no problems reading. I'm going to try to flash this to page one real quick and see if anything happens. All right, now we'll move over to page one, and let's try flashing something. It should work the first time. Can we drag and drop? Yes, we can. All right, let's go ahead and write. Alright, and it's done rating the page one, so let's go ahead and test it out. And there we and go, there we go, Tetris VM on RC. We're using a webcam. webcam. But, but yeah. yeah. No problem, no problem here. here. And then when you're running in Windows XP, it I've had I've flashed a whole bunch of stuff and never had anything go wrong. Um, I think one time I missed a uh, save file didn't get read or written correctly, but other than that, this fixes like all the flashing issues that uh, everyone has on the internet. Um, yes, it does require you to lug around a virtual copy of Windows XP, but I say it's worth it for this nice, fairly cheap flash cartridge to make it work every time, completely consistent. So, alright, I guess I'll see you guys later. Uh, bye.